This is the low pass filter circuit and uh, over here on the left hand side those two yellow wires one of them is connected to the generator um, and the other one is connected to the scope. This is the voltage follower so we have it <clears throat> connected before the other op amp. So these are the two 1k resistors. This is a 10 nanofarad capacitor. These are two 10 nanofarads um, connected in parallel to give us 20 nanofarad and the orange wire out here is the output signal going to the other channel of the scope. Notice on the rails here I have ground at the bottom minus 9 volts just above that. The minus 9 volts connects to pin 4 of each of the amplifiers and then the red wire on top is going to plus 9 connected to pin 7 and the ground wire is also on top. You may even be able to read the values on the capacitors. I think they say 103 for 10 nanofarads and the two resistors are 10 Ks. Over here I have the battery connections and I use little jumpers so that I can turn on the power or turn off the power with those jumpers. Okay, and uh, when I did my calculations, I was able to get an FC of about 12.5 K or no, I think it was less than that, sorry, 11.3 K expected, and I measured about 12.5 K. That's a, a reasonable difference between the two. Hopefully this video helps you out. Hello. In this example, I've connected a low pass filter to the picoscope, and we're looking at the, what, how the output responds to a change of frequency. And we're actually going to use something called the uh, signal generator sweep frequency. What it allows me to do is sweep upwards from a starting frequency of 5 kilohertz, stop frequency of 20. We're going to increase by 500 hertz every four seconds. And that'll allow me to see what happens to the output as that frequency changes. So <clears throat> as you can see right now, my expected critical frequency was about 12 or sorry, 11.3 kilohertz, but I think what you'll see here is a critical frequency of about 12.5. So let's see what happens. We're, we're starting at, uh, well, it's showing 12 kilohertz right now. And when it gets to about 12.5, you see that it's 101 millivolts RMS. That is the critical frequency. If you were to multiply 141 millivolts RMS times 0.707, that gives you about 101 millivolts. Now we're going a little higher, and you'll see that that higher frequency is, is dropping the output voltage. It's attenuating the output. And as I go higher and higher, it becomes more attenuated. attenuated. Now we're down to 77 millivolts. Okay. The input is not changing. That's the blue channel. And the output keeps getting smaller and smaller. But we are going to go back to... 5 kilohertz and you'll see that the output rises again to about 140 millivolts when we do that. So let's just watch what happens. We're getting higher and higher and the RMS value keeps dropping. Okay and here we go it's about to switch back down to 5 kilohertz in four seconds. Here we go. Now look what happened to that signal. It's the almost exactly the same value as the input. They're both about 140 millivolts. Dropping a little bit. And I know that for this circuit, I measured a critical frequency of about 12.5 kilohertz. So we'll just go through this one more time and see what happens at that 12.5 kilohertz. And while we're doing that, notice that the channel A is set to plus or minus 1, B to plus or minus 500. The sweep output is 200 millivolts. And notice that the trigger is at 0 volts. And here we're at 11 kilohertz. And I'm looking for a value here of about 101 to signify that it's at that minus 3 dB point. And you'll see that at about 12.5 kilohertz, that's where it is. For the time base, change the time base, go into here, set it to 200 microseconds for division. 
to set up the measurements. I went into measurements and set up RMS frequency of the input and the RMS of the output. You might want to choose small here, but that's fine for now. And uh, oh, the other thing I want to show you is if you have to move these traces up and down, you just drag on this blue line on the side. So you need to bring your mouse over here. Same thing over here. So you want it to sit about there, but you want it so that it uh, locks into zero, vo zero volts on both sides. The other thing that you can do, if you want to save the setup that I have here, you go to save and you have to choose not the data file, but the settings file. And you can call it, say, lab two filters. And that way, once you save it, you don't have to set everything up. Everything will be set up as you expected. And you can just go to open and uh, lab two filters. Click on that and then everything gets set up the way it was initially. If you want to change the trigger point, uh, this is where you will do it. I have the level set to zero. It's auto triggering. So I hope all of that information helps you out when you actually have to do that.